artists and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another swatching video and I know how popular those have been because I think a lot of you guys like talking about color and seeing me swatch them. So today I'm going to be swatching a palette that I actually already have but um, I never actually swatched here on YouTube. So today we're going to be doing Daniel Smith's Jean Haynes Master Artist Set and this one is my absolute favorite. And I would say that if you are looking for your first watercolor set and you, you know, want something a little bit off the beaten path that's not your typical starter set, this one I would highly, highly recommend because the colors are absolutely gorgeous. And the way that she chose them and the actual specifics of the colors are incredible. I mean, they are, they were my gateway to discovering Daniel Smith as a brand and one of the reasons why I love them so much. So without further ado, let's jump right in and start swatching these. Okay, so this is what the box looks like. So you can see there's a nice sampling of what the colors look like on the cover, as well as a wash or gradient of all the colors on the bottom. Um, but let's turn to the back real quick so we can just take an overview of what these colors are gonna be. And while the swatches are helpful, I feel like they're not as good as the real thing. So obviously this is what this video is for, for you guys to get a good feeling uh, or a good sampling of what these colors look like in real life. Um, so let's get organized. Um, I'm going to set up these paints in the same order as they appear on the box. Obviously order really does not matter when you're talking about colors, but for the sake of organization and just keeping this video somewhat consistent with how everything is listed on the packaging, we're just going to do it that way. I've got some clean water. Um, and then I'm going to swatch all this on, instead of my regular cutout swatch cards, I'm actually gonna do this on a piece of paper since I actually already did do swatches. If you've seen other videos, I typically do individually cut cards that kind of look like paint chips. But since I've already done that here, then I'm just going to sample all of these on a single sheet of paper. All right, so starting from the top, we have Cascade Green as our first color. So I'm gonna reach for that first and squeeze that onto my palette to get that going before I transfer that to my paper. So Cascade Green is a very lush, evergreen forest kind of color that reminds me of a little bit of an emerald, but with complexity and earthiness to it that would make it perfect for using in landscapes, botanicals. I'm also thinking something like a cooler version of a moss green that you might find in the shade of, a, of an overgrown forest. So if you were standing next to a waterfall in the Amazon jungle, for example, you might find some of these beautiful greens being reflected in pools of water. So I'm gonna label this real quick and move on to the next color, which is Green Appetite Genuine. So let's squeeze that onto the palette and get that going. Green Appetite Genuine is actually from Daniel Smith's Primatech line of colors, which are colors that are harvested from actual minerals and gemstones. And this one in particular is sort of a mix between an olive green and kind of an earthier version of a sap green. So this one would be absolutely lovely in botanical illustrations, landscapes again, and a more modern, unexpected take on a sap green with tons of granulation and texture, which I think you'll love. So again, let's label it and move on to our next color, which is going to be Opera Pink. And Opera Pink is the most vivid of all pinks. It's a bright magenta, and I'll even go a step further to say it kind of borders on neon because it is so vivid, like a true bubblegum Barbie pink. The only downside to it is that it is a fugitive color, meaning that it fades over time. So it is not as light fast as some other pinks you might find, but depending on your usage of it, if you mix it with other colors, as well well as if you scan your work, what kind of artist you are, if it's going to be framed in the sunlight, that kind of stuff, um, will determine whether or not and how much it will fade. So personally, I don't have a problem using it because a lot of my artwork ends up being digitized anyway. But something to keep in mind, just so you know that this color does have a tendency to fade a little bit over time. As far as usage of it goes, if you're a fashion illustrator, this is a fantastic color. Also, if you do florals and you want to mix it into your oranges and reds to create some really beautiful, warm and unusual combinations, I think that would be great as well. 
And lucky for us, we have two pinks in the set, the second one being Quinacridone Magenta, which is a deeper reddish violet that kind of edges between a wine or burgundy color and a pink as you start to lighten it. So you can get from a very, very pale pink to a much darker jewel tone. I could just as easily see this on florals like dahlias or even anemones, and I could see this transition to velvet textures on a costume or fashion illustration. All right, so let's label this and move right along to our next color, which is imperial purple. Another name that this color is commonly known as is Tyrian purple, and that's from the region of Tyre in Lebanon. So I've learned this recently, but um, it's harvested from a reddish purplish kind of dye. And throughout history, purple has been very closely associated with monarchies and the imperial families. And so this color is definitely very rich and regal and has variations that occur between a deep shade of plum and maybe an ultramarine as well. So it kind of straddles a line between a blue and a pink and a purple and it also granulates a fair amount so I find it very interesting to work with and I reach for this more and more now as an alternative to dioxazine violet. So that is imperial purple and we're going to move on to what is actually its complementary color which is nickel azo yellow for our next swatch and this one is a very very bright and very staining color and this yellow is a very staining very marigold warm color so if you're a fan of let's say a cadmium yellow or a more orangey yellow you're going to like this color a lot because it has a very punchy saturated color to it. So as my brush touches the paper, it's an explosion of color and we really have a very sophisticated, slightly more earthy yellow as well. So it's not a bold primary, you know, rubber ducky lemon yellow. It has some, some earthiness to it, which I think is very interesting and makes it work very well with other colors when you're mixing it in a whole palette or in a whole painting. So this would be perfect for the petals on a sunflower, um, a color that you could use for a sunset if you were doing a sunset painting or landscape. You could mix this into other colors as well to create really nice variations with warmth to them, like touches of sunlight that are hitting autumn leaves, for example, things like that that bring some beautiful depth to your paintings. Next up, we have Aussie Red Gold, and I'm gonna say it correctly now because last time I had somebody from Down Under give me a friendly correction that, you know, this is from Australia, so Aussie definitely being the right word and not Aussie, which I was pronouncing it before. So Aussie Red Gold is a rich golden color, which is a little bit reminiscent of yellow ochre. However, it is warmer and redder, which is making me wonder whether or not it's inspired by something in the geography or the landscape of Australia specifically because of the name of it. And in my head, I directly go to, you know, the outback in Australia and the canyons and the sandy but golden sunlight of that whole environment. So what does that mean for you? Again, this could mean beautiful colorations in a landscape. This could be amazing for still life if you're doing fruit baskets and oranges, obviously. And this little swatch is starting to look like a Mark Rothko painting. So there's so many possibilities because this color is absolutely phenomenal. Let's wrap this up and move on to the next color, which is Moon Glow. And Moon Glow is an incredibly interesting color and one that I've grown to really use so much in my day-to-day -day palette. So I actually don't use black at all ever um, in my palettes, but I have been reaching for this color in particular because it has, it checks all the boxes that I want when I'm you know, trying to create shadows in my work, which is a dark color, but that doesn't have that deadening that happens when you have a true gray or black. So this particular color, Moon Glow, is composed of touches of red, some ultramarine blue notes, and a little bit of gray as well. And that is a really wonderful sweet spot to get some very, very sophisticated shadows and darker values in your painting without killing all of the color that you've worked so hard to build in and all that vibrancy, especially when you're working with other colors, like in this palette that have so much saturation and vibrancy, this one will not kill that vibe, as they say. And interesting Interestingly enough, when you look at it next to the Aussie red gold, it actually kind of looks like the difference between a warm summer day versus a day in the snow. So this one actually would be great for landscapes in the winter time or a moonlit night, where if you wanted to create a painting that has a bit more of a mood going on, this could be a really wonderful option to reach for.
And we now have two left, um, the next one being Undersea Green. And this one is another really great green. And I realize we have three greens in this palette, but each one of them really has their very own unique and distinct personality, which I think is great. So this green is very particular and has some very earthy notes, kind of like seaweed or sediment that you'd find at the bottom of a lake or a pool of water. So if you are averse to very saturated primary greens, you're gonna love this one because this one is extremely versatile and you can use it on landscapes, you can use it on foliage, you can use it on botanicals, you can use it on even portraits, honestly. You could use some of the darker notes in undersea green as gorgeous, gorgeous shadowy moments in areas like the hair, or if you're brave enough, actual shadows on the face, and really bring some color into your shadows with something that's dark in value, but still has an interesting um, underlying color to it. And again, this one has also become another one of my palette staples because I just find it so versatile. So that's Undersea Green, and I really think that Jean Haynes did an incredible job putting together this range of colors because they're fantastic. So the final color in the series is a color called Lunar Blue, and as the name suggests, it is a very moonlit or lunar, faded, not so primary blue, which I think, you know, like with a lot of these colors, the fact that they're not primary and have some either earthiness or some grays mixed into them make them very, very versatile to work with. So Lunar Blue is another one that would be great to use for darker values in your painting, shadows, even that winter snowy scene that we were talking about with Moon Glow, that could be coupled really well with this color. And if you lighten this color considerably, you can also get really delicate blues, like a periwinkle or even a very, very off-white kind of blue that's reminiscent of fine china. Adding a ton of water will also give you a daytime sky. So you're not necessarily obligated to make it a nighttime sky just because the name of the color is lunar blue. Add enough water and you can get a really sophisticated and very elegant daytime sky, which is what I use this a lot for actually. All right, so we're going to label this one and then we're just gonna do a quick recap to go over everything that we put down on this page. So we have Cascade Green, Green Appetite Genuine, Opera Pink, Quinacridone Magenta, Imperial Purple, and then on the following line we have Nickel Azo Yellow, Aussie Red Gold, Moon Glow, Undersea Green, and Lunar Blue. So that covers it, the Daniel Smith Jean Haynes Master Artist Set. Um, like I mentioned before, this palette is just so incredible and versatile. So if, for example, you are on the market for, you know, um, a beginner watercolor set that is maybe not your typical beginner set with the primary colors, I would really, really suggest taking a look at this one because you don't have to work very hard to get your colors to sing and look really professional and beautiful. And there's, I think there's something in here for everybody. Um, so yeah, really recommend it. Um, and if you guys are interested in seeing more swatching videos or more tutorials or any specific art content, just let me know in the comments below because, you know, I read everyone's comments and I try to answer everybody. Um, and, uh, and I really want to know what it is you guys want to learn more about and maybe, you know, maybe make some more content relating to that. As always, thank you so much for watching and for joining me uh, every week on these art videos and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.